Michigan beat Alabama 27 to 20 in the Rose Bowl. This is the first time. I mean, Michigan has struggled mightily to get out of the semifinal round. They've been to, I think, three or four of them, and they've lost every single one before this game. And first of all, let me give a a humble shout out to myself for picking this game right. And exactly what I thought would happen in this game is exactly what happened. Now, I was one for two. We're going to talk about uh, Texas and Washington after this, but this was the one I got right. So shouts out to me. (laughs) But I talk about habits a lot. And I talk about developing habits throughout the season. A lot of the times when I have that conversation, it's in reference to the NFL and how it's very hard to build a habit throughout the year, throughout the season, and instantly think that's going to change or instantly think that you can just flip a switch and, and completely kill all the habits that you built throughout the season. We're going to talk about week 17 of the NFL season, and a lot of times you're going to hear me talk about habits again. Well, going into this Alabama-Michigan game, what habits did we see Michigan and Alabama build? One of the biggest reasons and one of the main reasons I was confident that I thought Michigan was going to win this game is because of the habits that they built throughout the season. Michigan, and I talked about this when I talked about Baltimore Ravens and, you know, hardball led teams. They don't care how they win. They are just going to win. They're going to play their game. They're very rigid in in changes as far as their approach to the game. Because it's been so successful, I mean, at this point, they're 14 and 0. It's been so successful. Why would you change? But they're very rigid on changing because they have found a formula for success. Smash mouth football, defense first, running game, and then you hope that the quarterback can give you something spectacular. But you don't need to give you something spectacular. You just need to be on point in certain moments. You see, not a lot of times can that formula work because you don't have the players, you don't have the personnel to do that. There are times where you see teams that try to be one way, but you look and say, I understand what you're trying to do, but you do not have the personnel for that. Some teams are able to adjust. Some teams are not. Michigan has been one of, if not the best defense in college football this entire season. Michigan, while the, the stats won't tell it, Michigan has been one of the best and one of the most consistent running football teams in the nation all season. Yes, there's been the only turmoil. That's another thing because people talk about turmoil and people said there's been a lot of turmoil and a lot of distractions with this Michigan team. But that's not true. The only distraction that has been honestly has been with the coaches. When we talk about Jim Harbaugh and being suspended twice or when we talk about the whole sign stealing thing, I think the sign stealing thing, which, of course, people were saying that Michigan had unfair advantage stealing signs, even though everyone pretty much steals signs. I think that was the catalyst to bringing this team together and to saying, "Okay, we're going to prove to them that we are, in fact, as good as we have been and because a lot of people were saying that this Michigan team is only good because they're stealing signs but they they've been on a tear since but like I said it's habits we just talked about Michigan's habits what habits have Alabama developed this year well Alabama is still Alabama let me not I'm not taking anything away from Alabama Nick Saban is still one of if not the greatest college football coach we've ever seen you still have the brand of Alabama and the smash mouth football but the thing that Alabama has had that no one really hasn't since Nick Saban has been there is the consistency of the brand 
And what I mean by that is when we talk about the brand, what is the brand of Alabama? Consistent, machine. We're going to be physical. We're going to be mistake free. We're going to be ag aggressive. We are going to beat you in every facet of the game. That has what they've been able to do their entire Nick Saban era. And the way that you can the way that you can continue that is the players is recruiting is having the personnel that embodies the coach. You know, you've had a Derrick Henry, you've had a Mac Jones, you've had a Tua Tungvaloa, you've had a Bryce Young, you've had a Jalen Hurts, you've had a Devontae Smith. Like it's it's very Recruiting, I talk about this all the time. Recruiting is very important, and recruiting is the backbone of college football. Well, Alabama, year after year after year, continues to be amongst the top teams of recruiting, and they recruit the same type of players. Now, obviously, those players go on to do great things either in life or in the NFL, but that is how they're able to keep this engine going. This year, however, has been different. This is one of the first years Alabama has gone in without having a clear cut vision of what their quarterback situation was like. Again, Jalen Milrow, who was the quarterback of the Rose Bowl, was benched, I think, the second game of the season. This was the first Alabama team that you saw really had holes. That's another thing. Alabama teams would have holes, but those holes weren't as detrimental as they were against Michigan. Alabama, there have been times when their quarterback play hasn't been the best, but they've had a, a Hall of Fame running back like a Mark Ingram, like a Derrick Henry, like a, a TJ Yeldon. Their, their offensive line might not have been the best, but they've had a historically great defense. So I'm not saying that these Alabama teams have been perfect, but they've had they've had a unit that they can lean on. Well, this is the first Alabama team that didn't really have a unit to lean on. Yes, they had a good running back. Their, Harris has been was a good running back. Jalen Milrose, we talk about the maturation that he was, that he's that we've seen from him from the beginning of the season to where to the Rose Bowl and how meteoric that was. And just how meteoric and how this team has improved from the beginning of the season to now. However, we talk about habits. And sometimes there are things that you, things just get in your own way because you just can't get over it. Alabama has struggled all year with the, the their center in, in the snap. They've struggled all year. Their offensive line, I talked about that last episode. This offensive line can be beat. This offensive line is one of the weaker offensive lines in the Nick Saban era. And on top of that, this is one of the weaker defenses in the Nick Saban era. And you know how... Outside of the loss, right? You know how you know I'm right about that? As soon as Alabama lost. What's the first thing they did? I don't know if it was projected. I don't know if anyone saw it because it was one of those media dumps seeing as though people were celebrating the Rose Bowl. People were celebrating the Sugar Bowl. Alabama made a call, I think, to their AD or whoever's in charge of this to try to get more NIL money means they know that they're at a recruiting disadvantage. And when you look across, and this is one of the first times, I think, in the Nick Saban era, outside of maybe last year, these last two years, I'll say that, it's probably the first time where you look, where Nick Saban looks across the field, Nick Saban looks at the team when you look at the offensive line compared to the defensive line. The, the When you look at the wide receivers compared to the corners, when you look at every position. This is probably one of the first times where outside of probably the quarterback, because when we talk about athleticism, Michigan ha 
had players. Michigan's units were much better than Alabama's units. Oh, man, you stayed to the end of the video. I appreciate you. If you like what you saw, be sure to hit that subscribe button so you'll never miss any content from your boy. You can also go back and watch past episodes, past clips, and don't forget that the Unpopular Podcast new episodes drop every Wednesday and Saturday. Appreciate you.